Right, today I'm going to be cooking one of the pork loin joints that we got from our pig. And don't worry, this isn't turning into a cooking channel. I'm acutely aware that I've done quite a lot of kitchen-based videos lately. But I thought this one was a really relevant one for the channel because I want to show you how I take a piece of meat, a pork loin, and I, I, a lot of the recipes I've shown you are of the same theme. I'm kind of showing you how you to stretch the meat, how you can take one cut of meat and basically feed far more people than you might think out of it. So I'm going to start with this piece of pork loin. And it's one of the cheaper cuts of meat if you're buying them in the shops, which, which always amazes me because it's such a versatile and amazing piece of meat. I don't understand why it's so cheap, but it is one of the cheaper cuts. So we're going to take this and we're basically going to butterfly it out in a, a really thin way, a special way I'll show you, that we're going to then be able to make it look amazing, taste amazing, and like triple in size. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So um, waste not, what not. We're not going to waste the juices from the meat. We're going to put that in the tray that we're going to cook it in, because that's how we're going to get our gravy. And let's start by butterflying out half this joint. So we're going to do it in two halves because it's so big. So we'll start with this piece. And what you've got to do, you've got to imagine that you're taking a slice off it along the bottom, whichever bit you've got touching your chopping board, imagine you're taking a slice off of the piece at the bottom directly in line with your chopping board, but don't cut all the way through. Don't cut out the other side. And then what that's going to do is allow you to basically roll it over and then do the same again. And you just keep coming through. And the thinner you cut, the longer the piece you're gonna get. I've cut through there, don't worry about that, it's just not a problem, you don't need to worry about it. But what we're after is a really long, open piece of meat. I've cut through it again there, I'm not worried, it's not a problem. So this was quite a large loin when I started, but we've only taken half of it. And as you can see here, we're going to almost cover our chopping board. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this up, but first we're gonna put some stuff in it. Now, what I'm putting in it is all things that I've purchased, I've bought them, because as you'll know, you know, we're still, on our journey but everything that's going in here is something that we either do already grow or produce so when I come to do this next year we'll be able to do this with items that we've completely made and grown ourselves or things that I'm learning to make so and the first thing we're going to use is some salami and I love using salami there's so many choices for what you can use in here to do the job I'm doing. And you can make some really different variations. And I've done lots of different variations on really different flavors. So I'm using salami this time, but you don't have to. You can use anything you like, really. You can use regular ham, or you could use nothing at all for this step. But I'm gonna start with some salami this time. We're using salami because it's something my entire family loves, and it's also got loads and loads of flavor that's just gonna carry through and soak through the whole process. Next thing we're gonna put in there is some asparagus. Now, asparagus is, again, not essential. It's not a cheap vegetable if you're buying it. It's one of the more expensive vegetables if you're buying it. So you could use purple sprouting broccoli, anything like that, something that's got that crunch is what I'm after in the middle, but also that, that texture that kind of contrasts with the meat, but doesn't overpower it. So, I personally love it with asparagus. It's one of the things that I always use. And of course, we're growing asparagus in the garden and it's been in for three years. So next year, we'll be harvesting loads and loads of asparagus. Now, the next thing I'm gonna add is some grapes. Now, you might, this might seem unusual to you if you haven't cooked with pork and grapes before, but pork and grapes go together incredibly well. And it's something I discovered a few years ago, and the 
balance of the sweetness and tartness with the, the meat and all the other flavours is just divine. So I really recommend that you try it with grapes if you haven't ever tried that before. But another thing you can use for this step instead is chutney. If you put a layer of chutney there, that's also going to give it that sweetness. Or you could miss, miss it out entirely and go completely savoury. That works too. But remember the whole purpose of this exercise is to kind of complement the pork. We still want the pork to be the star of the show, and it will be. But we want to complement the flavours. And also what we want to do is basically the aim of the game is to turn this pork loin into one that's several times wider. So we're going to put some grapes here. Now in the past, I'm not using it this time, but I've put cheese in. If, uh, you know, if you wanted to go that way, cheese works great. I'm trying to think of some other things that you can use. You know, you're limited only by your imagination, really. But that's going to do us for what we're putting inside. So we're going to roll that up now. And it's so simple to make and it's so simple to cook. Right, the next step. We're now going to wrap that in some prosciutto ham. Now again, talking about all these ingredients, the prosciutto ham, that's something that I am making as we speak for the first time. I've got some in the in the fridge. The salami is something I've never made. However, we are producing all the raw ingredients for it. So in the future, it's certainly something that I'm going to be learning how to do. All of the charcuterie cuts are something that I'm very, very keen to learn. So we'll be able to produce the pork, the salami, the asparagus, and of course we've got our own grapevine out there. We haven't saved any of the grapes this year. I uh, didn't really look into it at the time, we were so busy doing other things, but I will definitely be looking into ways that we can preserve the grapes so that we can use them for dishes like this in the rest of the year. So once we've got our prosciutto ham laid out, it's really simple, as you can imagine. We're just going to roll it all up. And the prosciutto acts, again, it does two jobs. It seals in a lot of the moisture and the flavours so that all those flavours that are in there really intensify and it also obviously adds its own flavour to the outside. Now we've done two things there, not only have we created a much larger joint but what we've also done is we've intensified all those flavours, we've added flavours that really pack a punch. They won't overwhelm the pork because of course most of them are pork flavours from the salami and the prosciutto. But what they're going to do is it's going to mean that a, a small slice of this is going to go much, much further in your mouth. So this one piece is easily going to feed five adults. We have five people live in our house. Three of them are children, but they eat like adults. So it's going to feed at least five adult portions. So the only other thing that we're going to do now is take our baking tray. We're going to serve this with some potato wedges and some vegetables and some gravy. So in order to make our gravy, we want a lovely stock off the bottom of our meat here. So we're gonna take our onion and we're just gonna chop that into big pieces, bang that in the pot. And we're gonna be serving it with carrot baton. So, well, again, at the end, ends of our carrots and this is going to again just add to that flavour. Now you remember me saying when we put the grapes in that an addition or a, a substitute you can use for the grapes if you like is some chutney for that sweet sweet sour kick. Well what we're going to do is we're going to add a really nice big spoon of chutney to our gravy to give it that nice sweetness that sauce. So that's done. Last thing we're going to add to that is some sage, which I'm quickly going to pick. So we're just going to add some sage to this now. You'll probably notice I didn't season it. I didn't add any salt and pepper. I will add some pepper, but I'm not going to add any salt. And again, the reason is for those cured meats that are in there, because we've got the salami and the prosciutto on the outside, in my experience, they tend to 
you know, seep out some saltiness into the rest of the meal and, or into the rest of the joint rather. So you're just not gonna need the, uh, you're just not gonna need the salt that you might think you need. I'll get a little bit of pepper on that. There we go. And that's ready to go into the oven. And that's not gonna want too long in the oven either. Probably between 40 minutes and an hour, depending on the size of your, your starting joint. This one's gonna want about 45 minutes. So I just had to run out into the garden to get a cabbage. We've got some leftover gravy from another meal we had fairly recently, and that was a roast pork dinner. We always seem to have leftover gravy at this time of year. Um, I always make too much, and that's fine, as long as it's heated really, really well and everything else, it can go in the fridge and then be used next time. So um, we're gonna use leftover gravy from last time, and we're going to just increase the amount if we have to, but the only changes we're gonna make is we're gonna just add some of that chutney to give it that sweet kick that's gonna go really well, mesh really well with the pork. So uh, this is the leftover gravy before now. If I remember rightly, it's quite heavy in white wine. And it doesn't look particularly appetizing at the moment, but that's just where it's been in the fridge. So all of the fats and things like that that have made up the gravy have solidified. So once that's heated up, we're gonna have a lovely gravy there and we're just going to adapt it and increase it. So if you haven't already noticed, I'll let you into a secret, and that is that I don't really use recipes. I don't have a recipe for anything I do. I kind of make it all up as I go along. So things tend to change, and what I say I'm gonna do at the start of a recipe, at the start of what I'm cooking, isn't necessarily what I end up doing. And that's just because things change and I adapt as I go. So already I'm thinking now what we might do is actually just go for a, a stronger sauce rather than a gravy and just have less of it. So I might just reduce this down rather than increasing the volume, I might actually decrease it a little bit and just go for a little bit more flavour. That goes across the board because what I'm trying to get across is the principles, the principles of making the meat go further and things like that. So a case in point of me altering the recipe, I'm not going to add a chutney in it simply because I've had a look and the only chutney that we've got open, well the only chutneys that we've got open are really really spicy, they're ones for me. So uh, rather than open another can of chutney just yet, I'm going to switch up to something else I've got open which is this medlar jelly that I made. It's amazing. So I'm gonna use this for the sweetness instead. And it really is incredible. It's the closest thing I've ever found to just natural honey. It's not the same and it's not better, it's not worse, it's just a bit different, but it's very, very close to natural honey and it's Absolutely phenomenal, but it's just going to give it loads of sweetness, which is what I'm after. Everything else is pretty much done, so, well, everything's done, so I'm going to take the pork out and let it rest for a couple of minutes. Whenever you watch a recipe, you always hear people say, let it rest before you carve it. There's a reason for that. The muscle, which is what it is, when it's exposed to that really high heat, it tenses up. So when you go to cut it, that's why it all tears apart when you cut it straight out the oven. So if you want to get a really nice straight cut, let it rest, let everything relax again, and then you'll be able to cut through it much, much better. So that's why you let it rest. Look at that. Mm. So there you go, and you can see that the whole point of this exercise was to show you that by doing the pork this way, you've only got to take two tiny slices like that. And I'm gonna serve that on the table with some potatoes, with some uh, potato wedges. And I've hardly touched that joint really in that serving. So it's just a way of making the meat go a lot, lot further. So that's it for this video. I'm gonna sit down and eat my dinner now and uh, I'll speak to you guys soon, cheers.